Here's an interview from one of our past shows on Rock and Metal Revival. If you're interested in hearing full shows, go to our Facebook page and check out our list of affiliates for times and places where you can hear Rock and Metal Revival. There is uh, Helen Back. That's the latest single from uh, Tesla guitarist Dave Rude from his upcoming album, Through the Fire, which will be released coming up here in November from Rat Pack Records. And with us today, we want to welcome back to Rock and Metal Revival our friend Dave Rude. How you doing, Dave? Oh, man, great, great. Glad to be back. It seems like it's been a while since we talked to you. Now, correct me uh, if I'm wrong, but this is your fourth solo project since we talked to you back in uh, 2008 and the first one since The Key in 2013. Now, lots happened since that release. What made uh, now the time for a new solo project from you, Dave? Geez, you know, yeah, you're right. A whole lot has happened. And, yeah, I think that's right because I had the two sort of e- the first one was an EP, second one was like a short album or long EP, depending on how you look at it, and then it had the key, which is a full record, and then this one, and, and um, you know, this this record started a long time ago. I, I started writing songs uh, and ideas for this one uh, in 2013, like, you know, by the time the key came out, I wasn't really actually doing my band anymore, like, that was a band record, um, and we were, you know, going out and doing tours and, and shows around the Bay Area and all that, Um and then, you know, by the time we we made that record over a while, and then when it finally came out, um, by the point it was released, the band was, like, done. And so I just sort of released a record and, you know, did press for it. But that was it. And then, you know, after that, I was thinking, well, it'd be fun to do a record just by myself because I've got, you know, recording stuff and I can I can do everything except the drums. So why don't I just do that? And, and I would write stuff on the road and, you know, because I always bring my Pro Tools uh, recording rig with me. And, um, you know, I was I was writing and recording in dressing rooms and hotels and all that for for a good amount of years um just sort of not with any timetable just like well you know i'll put some some riffs together and and it'd be fun to put out a really guitar based record and just with a lot of solos and you know maybe do it kind of so kind of quickly like just sort of go for it um but then we started making a new Tesla record, which was, I mean, a couple records ago. Like, we started writing <laughs> Simplicity, and that record came out in 2014. So it was like, it's a long time, right, that, that these, some of these ideas have been germinating, you know. And, and um, so, so spent went into Tesla record mode, did the Simplicity record, and then we were touring a lot, and I started working on it again on the road on my solo record. And then, then we started going out with Def Leppard, and, and that turned into making a new record, um, with Phil from Leopard, and then also just a lot more touring with them. Um, and then we were recording the Tesla record on tour with Leopard. So the time in the day that I would normally be recording my solo stuff, I was now working on the Tesla record in dressing rooms and hotels. So, you know, it was all for good, productive reasons, but um, it, it did end up taking quite a while. And then you throw in COVID, so two years off uh, yeah. and, and delay. Um, Till, till it was finally done and and now here we are and, and it's going to be out on november 17th so i can't wait nice nice now uh what was it like having brian wheat the bassist from uh tesla produce your album or how well how I, he, he didn't produce it i produced it um he mixed it though oh and, okay and yeah so um that was the fun that was actually a, a big sort of um, a new thing for me was, you know, it's producing myself, but still it was producing, and that was really fun because, because, you know, the the production is kind of adding, you know, there's different different ways to look at it, but since it was all, you know, all in house, being, you know, in my head because it's all just <laughs> just me, mm-hmm. like, you know, it's like, well, okay, how do you produce it yourself? So it's it's kind of more adding the bells and whistles and like, what if there was a shimmery strat tone on this one chord? And like, oh, what if I put in a shaker on the second verse of this song? And mm, why don't I do this whole song acoustic instead of electric? All those sort of things that, you know, a lot of times the producer would say. Um, and and having the, the freedom to do that um, and then the time, too, because of, you know, how many years it took, you know, you could kind of do it, listen to it for a while and then come back a month later and be like, nah, that sucks. I'm going to do it a different way. Or, mm-hmm. yeah, perfect. Now I know that was the right decision because you got you had time. It wasn't like, you know, like coming up to a deadline that you had to just sort of get something out. Um, yeah. So that was a really fun aspect to add to doing this record to make it this sort of solo thing. Um, but Brian mixed it, and man, he just knocked it out of the park. Like, he, he was um, originally was just going to mix one song. And, um, you know, I recorded a lot of the album at, at J Street Recorders, which is his studio. 
Uh, mm. He recently moved it to upstate New York, but it was in Sacramento for a long time. And um, that's where I did all the vocals. We recorded the drums, uh, the acoustic guitars, that type of stuff. Um, and uh, so, so he, you know, he heard all the songs. He said, man, it'd be cool to, to mix one. And I, I was like, oh, that'd be, that'd be great. You know, I'd be honored. So um, once I had all the tracks finalized, um, sent them over and he mixed it. And it sounded amazing. And I'm sitting there listening to the, the rough mix. And I'm like, dude, can you just do the whole record? Because this is great. Like, I don't want to get somebody else to do the other, like, 12 songs. Like, you, you got to do the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so he was into it, and, and he did it. And, um, man, I mean, I, I just think, I, I think it sounds fantastic. And, you know, he's, he's, he's such a great mix. He is a great producer, too, because he's produced other things I've done. And, and I've worked with him in the studio on a lot of stuff, Tesla and outside of Tesla. And, um uh, you know he's 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 great. You know, top to bottom. But he's really, really um, excelled with mixing as well. Nice, well. Nice. You know, Dave. I guess I've got a question. You you're saying you've been writing this album for almost ten years now. You've been in Tesla for quite a while. How do you when you write a song? Do you go, "Yep, yeah, that's a Dave Root song," or "That's a Tesla song"? Or I mean, do do you make that choice, or do you go, "Hey guys, check this out"? You know, uh, maybe a little of both. Um, usually, it's it's just me before i show it to him like i'll be like mm, this this wouldn't work for tessa but i like it and maybe it could work for me or you know because i do a lot of songwriting for for other people like co-writing for um you know different artists and so i'll i'll, I'll come up with a lot of stuff and it doesn't all fit either of them right sometimes it doesn't fit tessa or my solo thing so well but it's really cool i like it so i'll just put it over here in this sort of you know memory bank or file or whatever for for, for maybe next time I'm doing a co-write with somebody and it might fit their style, you know, because it's like, it was really good. It's just not going to work for me as a singer or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, with Tesla, we've usually gone in as we're making a record mode or at least we're making a song mode. So then I'll intentionally try and usually intentionally write for Tesla. And, and I'll just sort of be in that mindset of like, what, what's, you know, for me, really, it's what would Jeff want to sing over? Um, that's kind of where it starts. And, 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 you know, making sure that obviously the guitar has got to be cool, right? It started, all, all my stuff usually starts on a guitar. So I'll, I'll come with, come up with something that's like, oh, that's neat. Um, it usually just sort of happens by accident. I'm just sort of playing around, like just playing guitar, not paying attention to it. And then I'll notice a riff and be like, oh, that, that was cool and do it couple of times you're like okay yeah that could be a thing and then that's the verse then maybe this could be the chorus and you just kind of string some shit together mm -hmm. oops sorry that's <laughs> all right that's fine. together <laughs> and uh then um um you know after a little while it kind of takes shape and can be like yeah that kind of sounds like tesla like just sort of the maybe the chord progression the way they mm. fl things flow into each other or you know things like because i you know i've been in the band almost 20 years so i i know a lot of the stuff that you know Jeff would like usually, like oh yeah, he likes these type of choruses, so that might be a good way. Whereas if I was not going to present it to to the band, I might be about a different type of chorus. Like ah, oh, but if it's for me, I, I want it more like this. And but you know, it's like it doesn't matter what I want because if someone else is going to sing it, you know, sing over this part, you know, um, you try and tailor it to to what they usually like. Okay. So uh, when you recorded the guitars, did you use amps and mics, or did you prefer, did you use software and all the amp modeling stuff, and or do you, is it a mixture of both? Or Well, so what you hear on the record is, I think, all, you know, 98% real amps, um, but because we reamped everything. So what that means is I... Um, I, I like everything. I, I'm, 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 you know, I've made records on tape, um, I'm, you know, on my solo stuff and with Tesla and, um, and then obviously a ton of recording Pro Tools and all that. So I, I'm good with anything. I like uh, mm -hmm. the newer stuff. I like the old school stuff, the different methods of doing it all live in the studio or doing it like real regimented and making everything perfect. I, I kind of take something from all of that, and I really, I kind of love all of those different kinds of processes. But um, I basically did all, I did all the guitars and bass, all the electric guitars and bass plugged into um, into my Universal Audio, which is like an audio interface to go into Pro Tools, mm -hmm. and um, and I was using amp plugins. Um, okay. 
I, I used Guitar Rig 5 a lot, I used Amplitude 5 a lot, I used uh, Bias FX, was really great. Um, the amps are amazing, and, and I, I, because I was doing it so much on the road, you know, it's, you can't set up a mic in a loud amp in a hotel and, and all that, so um, I, I would just record with the plugins, and, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to reamp it or not, and I, honestly, when it was all finished, I almost left it, because the guitar sounded great. I was like, geez, I can't tell the difference, you know, mm -hmm. like, it sounds like a real amp to me, because the modeling is so sophisticated now, um, but, um, you know, I kind of, Brian actually was one of the guys that sort of talked me into it, um, like, hey, man, you should try reamping it. It adds this sort of sort of 3D sort of, it's kind of hard to put into words, but it's just going to make it sound bigger. Mm -hmm. And and I always reamp stuff, and you should try it. And so I did, and, man, I was immediately just floored by how much better it sounded. Um, so uh, it's all stuff that I recorded with plugins, but then you play, bra you play back the dry tracks with no plugins, through a real amp and then record that so it's it's like me real my real performance is through a real amp but recorded in different times wow <laughs> if that's that cool. makes sense that's yeah. cool <laughs> what, nice. you know dave i started thinking about this the other day the first time you were ever on this show we got in touch with you through myspace <laughs> and, it was, and it was the dave rude band yeah. yeah and 20 years later playing with tesla um has is it quit being a dream do you know what I mean? I mean, because I mean, you got to play with one of my favorite bands of all time. I mean, and when you first started out, that had to be just awesome. Oh, man. Yeah, it, it totally was. Um, and and it, still, it still is like a dream sometimes. Like, I get little <laughs> flashes of it. You know, because, like, it's one thing, like, uh, you know, it, it, it's really true. It probably sounds like a just lip service, but, like, I really think about that, like, every day. Like, especially when we're on tour, like, at some point, it'll come through my head like, God damn, I'm so lucky. Like, mm -hmm. this is insane. Like, I'm in Tesla. You know, and it's it's not always like, you know, in the beginning where it was like, everything was surreal. Like, what? This is, you gotta be, I'm in Tesla? You gotta be kidding, man. What? <laughs> now I'm on a, I have a guitar tech? What are you talking about? No way. <laughs> you know, it was like waking up in a dream. Um, and, and obviously, with, with just the time and all the experience, um, it's it's not like that so much because you couldn't function that way. It wouldn't. It would. You could yeah. live your life if you were always like, "Wow, man!" Every every <laughs> time you turn your head, um, it'd be hard to it'd be hard to make a sandwich, you know. Um, so I, I've I've adjusted to it, but I'm still definitely very conscious of of how you know unusual and completely just ridiculously lucky <laughs> it was, and and still every now and again, a lot of times it'll be like in the middle of a song on stage where I'll just like. Like a look around, it's like holy shit! I'm looking at the guys, like I'm in fucking death. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, um, so it it does still happen. It's it's a it's a weird situation, man. You know, to to, to join a band that you grew up listening to. That's cool. So now with uh, Steve Brown is playing drums now. Mm -hmm. So what's it like not being the newest guy? Gosh, it's, you get it's a pick so on weird. him. You get a pick yeah. on him and and yeah, pull right. some pranks on him and tell hey, him he's got to carry equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey man, <laughs> you tune my guitar up. Yeah, and, you're the you're new guitar tech. Why do I need to do? It? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, not at all, man. Steve Brown is the best, man, and and it's it's been so fun having him in band, and, and you know we 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 hang all the time. We get along great, um, and it, it's weird because I still don't think of. I still think of myself as the new guy, and the, like, okay, I'm the only non-original. Oh wait, no, I'm not the only non-original. <laughs> okay, there's there's, nice. another, there's another one of me now, but um, <laughs> you know, so yeah, he he, it's nice now. I'm not, I'm not totally the new guy, but I still always feel like no matter what, I'm always going to be the Ronnie Wood of Tesla because you know, like he's he, he's been in the stone for like 110 years, but he's still not technically the original guy, but he's mm. still done a bunch of cool stuff and everybody you know knows that version of the stones more than any else or, or you know a lot knows it well um and 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 still is like well as the new member of the stones like jesus christ dude, he's been there <laughs> since the 60s he's not the new member of the stones there's been like you know grandkids and great grandkids have been born in the time <laughs> <laughs> that's you know? funny so, so i uh i either way happy to be the the ronnie wood or or 
you know, second newest running wood of, of Tesla, absolutely. That's cool. You know, uh, Dave, because uh, here in Wisconsin, our football team kind of sucked this weekend. Oh, I got no. I got to throw in the five-man acoustical jam at Abbey Road. Ooh. And, Dave, what was it like playing where the Beatles played? Uh, that had to be a cool thing for you. That was definitely one of those, like, boom, like, this is crazy. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, look at how as we're doing it. Because that was... You know, it it was live. Like, that was truly live in the studio. I mean, we even had a tiny audience. It was just, we set up live, they had a little stage, um, and obviously everything was mic'd, and we were, we were recording for real in in a real studio, in the real studio, where the, the room that Beatles did, like, 90% of everything they ever recorded. I think it was called Studio B or Studio 2. I think it's Studio B. Um, and it's a really big live room, and we, we you know, we're, the whole band was set up our you know our our like mixing board like a live show it's like a small like stuff we would have done you know for like a radio concert you know like mm-hmm. oh tesla's doing a 20 minute acoustic show at five o'clock before their regular show tonight you know that time of thing mm. um and but it was, you know abbey road um uh so we were treating it like a live show and that helped um probably with at least for me um because I actually, that was one of the few times, maybe the only time I can ima- I can remember being kind of nervous. Like, I get excited before shows, but I don't really get nervous before shows. I'm not, like, afraid. I just, like, got a lot of adrenaline, and I want to go play, because I like to be on stage. It's fun, mm. right? Um, but this time it was actually, like, <laughs> like there, there was some, some pressure, which was weird, right? Because I'm not used to feeling that. And, and I, I think it was because... The, Beatles and everybody else. I mean, there's the Beatles, obviously the biggest, you know, giants looming over that studio. But I mean, ton, like count. If the Beatles had never existed, all the bands that have recorded in that room would still be like staggering. We would still be talking about well, what is it like to record in Abbey Road because mm-hmm. there's so many huge bands and gigantic records have been made there. Um, but yeah, the one thing I kept thinking was like, you know, it's it's as amazing as it is. It, it's still pretty old school like they didn't really update the at least where we were the, the live room it's it's kind of like an old 60s recording studio which you know in those days it was a lot more like a dentist office it wasn't like you know all cool and vibey it, it feels more like you're you're shopping for paint you know it's just like, <laughs> just like weird white walls it's like it's very clinical um and and, and just kind of plain um and i'm staring at like these big sort of squares on the wall and like John Lennon was staring at this square when he was like you know yeah. playing guitar on Lippy or or whatever song I was like whoa that just blew my mind and it was like that the whole time man I can bet I believe it now uh your album Through the Fire the album cover features your white uh epiphone your signature model there and like i told you off the air it's hard to find those things uh is there any plans for a second run of those or maybe doing a you should do like an explorer with the white with the white with the white fretboard and the red red pick guard and stuff that would look slick dude dude that would look slick yeah um i don't know i I, you know i I haven't um heard anything from epiphone about doing another one yet they did up the run a few times Um, okay um, but that you know, it's been a few years. Like I think the last time was before COVID. Um, yeah. Where where they would they because you know each one comes with a certificate of authenticity, so they have to mail those out to me so I can sign them before they you know pack the guitars up. Um, so they'd be like, oh hey, we're gonna send you another stack of, of COAs. Like oh okay cool, and then you know six months later, hey, we're gonna send you some more COAs. So um, I think they upped it a little bit, but it's definitely been a, a long time. And and they were a small. Um, small up reorder so um i don't know i hope so you know because a lot of people ask me about it and and you know they've shown me like links and you know it's going for double what it was if yeah. you know, on reverb or whatever so you know it's I, i'm just real happy people are you know Dang wanting it. And, and excited about it yeah hey, dave i got a i got a personal question for you when you're not writing playing or performing what is dave rude listening to on his playlist <laughs> Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I I uh, I go back and forth, man. I, I listen to a lot of weirder stuff. Maybe um, I, I like I like a lot of pop music. I like a lot of weird alternative stuff. And 
kind of maybe a little bit more indie-ish um uh and and then you know i went through a lot of country for a while so i still like to go back to that sometimes um only because i like i i grew up listening to all the classic rock stuff that you know most most of us rock dudes grew up on it's like you can only listen to highway to hell so many times so it's like jesus christ like i i, <laughs> I need a break and then yeah. I'll, you know i'll but the, you know it's still the, all those records are like timeless classics so if you li- if you don't listen to it for a year or two and then you go back and it's like oh my god this is amazing you know so i just have to stagger them you know like you know, i have to like give the black album like two years off and then i'll go back and be like inner salmon is the greatest song of all time <laughs> you know but because if you hear the classic rock radio and it's just the same like 15 songs on repeat like, oh god don't need to hear tom sawyer today please and i change it you know it's yeah. like it's it's so i love all that stuff it's what turned you know it made me who i am but like you know i i sort of intentionally find new music just because like i'm sick of hearing like appetite for destruction is probably my favorite record of all time and i don't listen to it very often because i've heard it so many times yeah. you know, in my lifetime that it's like i need i what i'm looking for now is some new artist or at least a new record even if it's an, an older artist uh, um, an artist maybe or an album that i haven't heard before that fills that same void that gives me that same feeling of like what like the first time you hear welcome to jungle like this is unbelievable like i want to find the next one of that nice cool. nice now uh what i want to know is on the new i we only heard the one song so far so i want to know is there any songs on the album that are going to feature the cowbell <laughs> or you, can you go back and throw some cowbell on something well, what I do is first when I'm writing, I first get one of my collection of yeah, many one of my many cowbells, and I I wait for inspiration, and then okay. I I just start you know banging out a rhythm on on the cowbell, the bell as as us enthusiasts call it, and, <laughs> and and then I'll just start humming a riff around the the bell and uh, huh. pick up the guitar. Yeah, so that <laughs> that sounds like the way to do it. Yeah, that's exactly. that's awesome. <laughs> you know what though it's a good question and there there is at least one cuz we did we did a separate session um for percussion after after all the regular drums were done i think it was even after the acoustics it was like one of the last things we did actually before the shutdown before covid when it was like oh the record's almost done got to do you know the last thing before we start mixing which is usually percussion like little odds and ends and oh a backup vocal i forgot or whatever um so uh i, ha- I had the drummer derek Deason, um who played all the drums on the record come in and, i mean he's just world-class drummer just amazing and and i was so happy that he uh played on this record um he's also in the video for for helen back he, he was able to oh, come cool. and be in the video which is cool um but yeah he, he's always one of my favorite drummers and um so he played all the drums and then I was like, hey man, could you do some like shakers and tambourine and stuff to add things, a little ear candy for the choruses and shit like that. Um, so he came in and I do specifically remember um, throwing in cowbell. I think there's cowbell on Helen Back. And, um, hmm. and and there's a, a couple of songs where it's like, God, should we go cowbell? Because usually when you're percussion, you have like a big box, <laughs> big box of stuff, so like toys and, and shakers and weird things, jackal jaws. Yeah. Um, and you just sort of see what works on which part, and and there was there was at least one or two where I wasn't thinking of cowbell, where he's like, "Hey, let's try cowbell." I was like, "Oh my god, that works! This is great. We got to have more cowbell," and, and we left it on there. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I know Dave. Uh, I'm really excited about this. Hearing the rest of this album for sure, and I was so excited when I saw the Rat Pack bundles, and you've got vinyl. Uh, that nice. has to be pretty cool having your album out in vinyl. Oh my God, it's amazing! And yeah, that's that's one of the things I uh, always loved about Rat Pack. And you know, we even did it on on the key. It was just uh, that they do it with every release. All all the uh, all the fan stuff. The bundles are amazing. You know, there's you know, like they sent me um, the, like the deluxe ones. I've got it, and and there was stuff I didn't even know they were making. Like cool guitar picks and stickers and like patch. Like like whoa, this is awesome! Like pictures I hadn't even seen of me. Like how did you like make this into a thing i haven't even seen the photo like this is That's great cool. and, you know so cool and the, the vinyl is like all red and you know so it kind of matches the red from the guitar on the cover and you know it's it's nice. just like so cool and that's the, like another thing i love about rap pack is that they're so into 
the physical product and, exactly. and yeah. that experience of, of the same thing that I'm sure like everyone you interview and um, all, all the rock p interviews you read are people talking about how like I grew up like opening the liner notes and enjoying the, the pictures and look, reading all the who engineered it and all that stuff and I mean that is so true and that's, mm -hmm. that's what I did my whole life so um, I, I love that you know this record is being put out like that and it's also coming out on cassette which is also my that's own. crazy sweet that's awesome well we're yeah. looking forward to the new Dave Rude album coming out called Through the Fire it's going to be out uh, on the 17th of this month on Rat Pat Records and Dave you know you are always welcome back on this show my friend man thank you so much great to talk to you guys and thanks for having me on <laughs> 